Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. As you can see I'm coming to you from outdoors once again. Uh, I'm at Hinokicho Park where it happens to be a very beautiful day. Over the last week or two the weather here has been kind of iffy and the air pollution has been kind of terrible. But today is a very beautiful day with beautiful nice clean clear air. And very warm if you happen to be sitting, sitting in the sunshine as I am right now. Uh, here at the park overlooking the pond, we have the very beautiful autumn colors and uh, the ground is covered with these beautiful gold and red leaves. It's a really wonderful day to be outside here to make a video. Uh, this, the subject of today's video is a camera which I've wanted to do a video about for a long time, but I haven't been able to because I haven't had an example of one of these cameras. Uh, this camera happens to be the Olympus 35 SP rangefinder camera. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com, my Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera, and I have an eBay store as well. So if you'd like to buy this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my online stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So, getting back to the SP here, the Olympus SP was introduced in 1969, which is kind of odd because uh, in 1969 SLR photography was very well established and uh, I guess the end of the line was already uh, in sight for rangefinder cameras and many manufacturers had already discontinued producing them. Uh, at the time this camera was introduced, Olympus was working on introducing two new uh, SLR cameras. One was the uh, in-house design S FTL. I'm not sure if that's the correct version or model. Uh, this was kind of based on the uh, Canon FT series of cameras, FTB and such. And they were also working on the OM series. Uh, the uh, F series, whatever it was, was discontinued after a very short time due to the much superior OM series. But uh, despite the fact uh, that these SLR cameras were being introduced, Olympus went ahead and began production of the SP. And they continued making this camera until about 1976. And it sold fairly well. I see quite a few of these here in Japan, and I also see them around the world. Uh, I guess there were a lot of old school photographers in those days which, uh, I don't know, thought that the SLR uh, cameras were just a phase or something like that, or they just preferred rangefinder cameras, so uh, the SP continued to be produced. Uh, there were a few different variations of the SP, and it's kind of difficult to, you know, the, the differences between them are quite minor. Uh, there was a black paint version, and I've had those from time to time. Most of the ones which were manufactured were this silver color. Uh, the only real difference you can see on the outside is the lens nameplate around the front. Uh, some cameras, like this one here, you can unscrew the nameplate for, uh, I guess, removing the front lens and doing service and such like that. Where others, the front nameplate was glued on, and it's a little bit more difficult to get that one off if you happen to uh, need to clean out the inside of the lens or whatever. What was really interesting and what set the SP apart from other uh, rangefinder cameras was its spot metering function. Besides having a normal CDS light meter, uh, the SP in also included a 6 degree uh, spot meter, which allowed you to take really good exposures in situations where the light is very difficult. So uh, I, I love to travel a lot, and sometimes we go to places where, you know, I, I, I like the old cathedrals and stuff inside in Europe, and these are quite dark inside uh, and often the, the only light which comes to these come through the windows which is quite beautiful you know, to your eyes but it's quite difficult to take a photograph in such situations but a camera like the SP allows you to uh, focus the exposure on a particular part of the scene a very small part of the scene uh, if you for example if you want your blacks in the scene to be actually black and not gray with the SP's system you can do that or if you'd like a uh, uh, a photograph where whites are actually white or you know it, it, it's really a really good system and it was so good in this particular uh, rangefinder camera that Olympus incorporated it inside of some of their SLR cameras like the OM2 spot uh, camera as well as the OM3 and OM4 cameras so a really wonderful feature so let's go ahead and take a look at the features and controls and functions and how to use the Olympus 35 SP so starting at the top here, we have the film rewind knob, which has this lever which pops out to give you a little bit extra leverage when rewinding the film. 
Uh, here we have the flash hot shoe, and this is a hot shoe where you can attach a modern flash directly to it. If you're using an old or I guess vintage flash, you can plug it into the sink socket and that's located right here uh, where my finger is pointing. Over here we have the shutter release button with a uh, uh, socket in the top for a standard cable release. And here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. On this side here we have the dial which we have to use to adjust the light meter. This is where you program the film speed. So if you say you're using a 200 speed film you would turn this dial until it points to the number 200 and then you are good to go. On the back here we have the viewfinder window and here we have the spot function. So you depress this button and this switches the meter from I guess the center weighted to the spot meter. Uh, the spot meter is sometimes not precisely focused on this camera so you kind of have to wiggle it around at light source to kind of detect exactly where in the viewfinder uh, the spot uh, sensitivity is, is going to be. So uh, when you get one of these cameras and the spot meter is functioning which is about maybe a little bit more than half the time, uh, get a little practice with it. In my experience, usually the, the area just above the rangefinder split image, that seems to be where you get the most sensitivity from the spot meter. On the bottom of the camera, we have the battery chamber cover. Uh, this camera was designed to use a Mercury MR9 or 625 battery. You can use a PX625 alkaline battery, or you can use an LR44 battery with an adapter, or you can use a wine cell battery, which will give you the most uh, accurate uh, performance from the meter. Here we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket and here is the rewind button uh, to rewind the film. And we have this cutout here to make it easier to, in, to insert the film cartridges. On the front here we have the important parts of the camera, uh, at least when it comes to operating the camera. Uh, first we have the lens in the middle and this is a, uh, I guess what they call a G Zuiko 42mm, 42mm f1.7 lens. Uh, the G Zuiko, that means it has uh, seven elements in this lens, and it's quite an excellent performer. And provided it's clean and in good condition and hasn't been kind of buggered around with, it will give you really amazing photographs. And of, a, I guess, much more uh, precision than you can get from the SLR cameras. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why uh, this camera was popular. Uh, the rangefinder cameras do not have the, the retro focus uh, system like SLR cameras, which allows them to put the lens closer to the film, which improves, I would guess, the, the resolution and such. So uh, a better design, but re a really an excellent lens, and that's one of the great features of this camera. On the back here at the base of the lens, we have a focusing tab, and it's arranged in both meters and feet. We have a self-timer lever. I recommend, as usual, do not use the self-timer on these cameras. Um, yeah, they're more reliable on this particular camera than they are on other versions, but um, they are still prone to having problems. Uh, behind this, you have the uh, shutter speed, or excuse me, the aperture ring with an A setting for automatic operation. And over here, you have a, a, a guide number system for when you are operating a flash with this camera. In the automatic mode, the uh, Olympus SP features program automatic operation, which is really wonderful because it allows you to do exposure compensation by simply uh, turning your camera to darker parts or lighter parts of your scene, depressing the shutter button halfway and locking the exposure for that amount of light. And it also works if you are using the, the spot meter. So this is a really uh, great system and a great meter if you're shooting places where the, the lighting situation is tricky. In the very front here, we have the shutter speed ring with a range of B and 1 second up to 1 500th of a second. And along here, we have a range of uh, was it EV numbers, which are visible through that number there. Because the light meter in this particular camera, when it shows you the reading, I believe it's in EV numbers. So you would use a combination of shutter speed and aperture to give you the, the correct EV number and quite simple to use. And when shooting the camera on automatic, please set both rings, the shutter uh, and aperture rings to the A, uh, like you see right here. So uh, for film loading, uh, quite easy on the camera. There's a catch here on the bottom of the left hand side. You pull this downward and the film door pops open. Uh, you slide the film canister in here like so. Uh, stretch the film across and feed it into the take-up spool. And you can simply 
Uh, let me take this off the auto version here. Once it's fed in, you'll kind of have to uh, wind the charging lever to wind the film. There isn't actually a thumb wheel on this camera as there is on some rangefinder cameras. And simply go ahead and wind until the film is pulled over and the, te the teeth on this sprocket are engaging the holes on the top and bottom of the film. Then simply close the film door and wind and such and fire the shutter until the number one lines up with this orange arrow. Uh, the rangefinder adjustment on this camera is located right here, so if your horizontal adjustment is off, remove this cap screw, and underneath you'll see the screw which you use to adjust uh, the horizontal adjustment. Uh, the vertical adjustment is on the top under this flash shoe cover. You kind of have to pry up on the front of this and slide it back. And on the left side here, if you look down, you'll see kind of a a large wheel with teeth on it. You have to turn that w forward or backward to make the vertical adjustment. But be kind of careful with that because that that gear which you have to turn is kind of mounted to a plastic lens and if you're not careful you can scratch the lens or uh, even knock it loose and then you'll have to take the top of the cover off to fix it. Uh, the weaknesses to these cameras, uh, the light seals are pretty much always bad in these and uh, they are in this one here. I have to replace this one. Uh, I, I get to doing more work on it. And uh, the rear uh, lens element is prone to getting fungus on it because of this um, uh, light seal material. Normally the lenses on Olympus glass are pretty impervious uh, to uh, fungus, but for some reason uh, the rubber light seal material makes a dust which gets around on the inside of this camera and when it gets on the lens it gives it a really good place for fungus to grow and it can grow quite deeply. Uh, this one has some slight marks on the back, uh, minor marks or mars from uh, fungus etching. I uh, don't really have any noticeable effect on the photographs. Um, you'd have to look really really close in photographing in certain, I guess, precise situations to be able to see the difference unless you know the, the marks are quite significant or there is a lot of haze. Uh, yeah, but uh, it really has to be serious to have a, a really big effect. Uh, cleaning the, out the camera is, is not so difficult. There's no hardware around the outside to remove. You have to remove the rewind knob and this cap and the sh shutter charging lever. And you'll find a couple of uh, nuts under here and if you remove these you can lift up the top cover and that will give you access to clean out the inside. Make sure not to lose the shutter button because it will kind of fall out when you take the top cover off. Uh, another thing to be careful of is the plastic around this spot meter button often breaks and it's usually a, in most, probably more than half the cameras I come across it's cracked or damaged. You can usually glue it back together in place and the top cover itself will hold it in. But in the case where it's cracked or broken, sometimes if you lift the top cover off, this black plastic thing and the button will fall off and you don't want those to get lost. Uh, other than that, it's quite a reliable camera. The shutter is fully mechanical, so if you don't have a battery for the camera, you can still operate it. Uh, the battery is only to power the meter and nothing else. And if you have one of these cameras which doesn't have a functioning light meter, which is quite common unfortunately, uh, you can use a handheld light meter, spot meter, or a light meter app in your smartphone. Anyway, uh, that's it for my uh, review of the Olympus 35 SP. I'll be listing this one for sale shortly on my online stores. If you're interested in buying it, uh, please visit my store sometime tonight or tomorrow. I should have it ready by then. Uh, for those of you who are interested in buying another kind of vintage Japanese camera, please check out my stores. I am adding a lot more new cameras recently. I received a lot of cameras recently through the mail and as I get them uh, cleaned up and ready I'll be making videos about them. If you'd like to see these videos uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.